Okay, let's go ahead and solve this nice little math problem here. And hopefully you recognize what type of problem this is. And even better yet, you know how to solve it. But let's go ahead and read the problem. It says 8 is to 10 as 12 is to what number? Okay, so if you think you can solve this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the correct answer to this problem in one moment. And then, of course, we're going to walk through step by step on exactly how to solve this type of problem. And let me give you a little bit of a hint. This word right here, two, should kind of give you an indication on what we are dealing with. Okay, so that's just a little bit of a hint. But anyways, I don't want to tell you too much more because I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this thing all on your own. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It's really my true passion to help as many people as I possibly can uh, learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time with mathematics. Please do not give up as you absolutely can be successful in math. But here is the most important thing you need, okay? You need to have great math instruction, i.e., Whoever you're learning math from or whatever you're learning math from, you have to understand it, okay? See, math is a technical subject. The way I like to teach math is to kind of explain things in easy-to-understand language so anyone and everyone can get this stuff without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that has math on it that you're getting ready for, things like the GED, SAT, uh, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, Check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes. A lot of students don't take any notes. Here's the bottom line. If you are a uh, math student, you absolutely need detailed notes. So start improving your notes. That's really going to help you out. But you can use my notes in the meantime if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and answer this question. And uh, again, the question is, 8 is to 10 as 12 is to what number? Let's go ahead and see the answer right now. It is 15. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, and by the way, even if you didn't know exactly what you did, you just kind of reasoned through it logically. But if you were able to figure this out, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A+, plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can share with your friends and family how awesome you were at math today. Nice job. Okay, so what is the topic we are dealing with here? Okay, now of course I'm going to tell you this right now. I did indicate up here that this word two should be kind of like a, um, you know, something that stands out to you, especially if you're at the middle school level, definitely high school level in terms of mathematics. This is a very, very big topic in uh, math, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you what it is right now. We are learning or we are talking about ratios, okay, ratios. So if you've heard that word, a ratio, well, you probably, um, I'm, of course, I'm going to give you the definition here in a second, but ratios are um, kind of grouped together with some other topics that you learn together. So you generally learn rates, ratios, and another thing called proportions all together. And rates and ratios are nothing more than fractions, okay? But they're fractions uh, with, uh, basically we're comparing two different numbers by division, i.e. a fraction, but we need to consider units of measure, right? I'll talk more about what a proportion is here in a second, but uh, I don't want to turn this into a full lesson on ratios and rates and proportions. By the way, uh, this is, um, again, this is like middle school level mathematics, definitely high school level. So if you uh, need help with rates, ratios, and proportions, let me give you two suggestions. You can uh, check out my pre-algebra or my Algebra 1 course. Those will be the best courses for uh, those of you out there that need some full instruction uh, beyond this video. All right, so again, a, a ratio is a fraction or fractions with the same units of measure, okay? Let me give you a, uh, let me kind of compare something here. Let's talk about a rate, and then we'll talk about a ratio, then I'm gonna get into uh, this prom here in a second. So if I say, um, 
a car is going 60 miles per one hour, okay? I'm comparing two different numbers, 60 and one, but my numerator here is miles, it's distance, okay? That's a completely different unit of measure than time or hours, okay? So this is 60 miles per hour. I could write it this way, 60 miles per hour. This is a rate, okay? It's a fraction where the units of measure are different, okay? In other words, we're comparing distance with time. And the big thing you know when you're dealing with um, a rate is that uh, basically you're going to see this word P, this word per, okay? So 60 miles per hour, 25 gallons per minute. Anything when you uh, hear that word per, you're, talk you're talking about rate, okay? So the technical definition, again, is going to be uh, effectively a fraction where you're comparing two different units of measure. All right, so now... I think uh, understanding a rate uh, will, is a little bit easier to understand than, let's say, a ratio initially. Okay, so if you're like, okay, I get that. Let's talk about what a ratio is. And a ratio, when you hear this word two, we're talking about a ratio. So let's talk about like something like a student-teacher ratio. So in other words, one teacher to 20 students, right? So if you go to like any school, a uh, typical way to describe, you know, um, uh, how many students are in a particular classroom, how many teachers um, are helping those uh, respective many uh, students, all right? They usually give you something like a teacher-student ratio, just in case for those of you out there that never heard that before. It's like, how, how many teachers per students, all right? So that is called a student-teacher ratio. Now, some of you might be saying to yourself, well, hey, Mr. U2 math man, uh, you told me it was uh, the same units of measure. Uh, in other words, um, you know, the numerator and denominator are counting the same thing. And here you have teachers and here you have students. Isn't this a, a rate? No, 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 no. Here's the deal, right? Let's go back to our 60 miles per one hour, okay? I'm going to explain this here in a second. But 60 is counting what? miles, right? That's distance. And one is counting what time and, uh, in terms of hours. So what is this one counting? Well, it's counting teachers, but we're counting people, okay? <laughs> now, uh, some of you might, might be saying to yourself, wait, teachers are people too? Yes, yes, we're all human beings. So we're this is a person. And here down here, we are also counting people. We're counting the same concept. So that is a ratio, right? And we are gonna, we're going to use this word two. One teacher, two. The fraction bar is the word two. So just like 60 miles per hour, that per is the fraction bar. 60 miles per, all right? That's the per one hour. Okay, so I couldn't just couldn't help myself out there. I have to kind of make sure you fully, fully understand this because a lot of uh, students, a lot of people don't really truly grasp the difference between ratios and proportions. So again, fractions with the same units of measure, i.e. we are counting the same thing conceptually. All right, so uh, now that you know that this is what we're dealing with, right, because we uh, see this word two, it's a good clue. Oh, we're dealing with the ratio. So what we want to do is express these, uh, express this information in this prom as a ratio, and we want to set up a proportion. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so here it is. So 8 is to 10, all right? So basically, you're going to say 8 is to, okay, this is to is the fraction bar. So 8 is to 10 as, all right, so that's an equal sign, 12 is to what number, okay? Well, we can always use a variable to represent any number that we want in algebra, so we'll use the variable x. So 8, let's just kind of read this together, 8 is to 10 as 12 is to what, okay, what number? So right here, what we've done is taken our uh, lovely little problem and uh, write it as a proportion, okay? So this is a proportion, okay? And a proportion is one fraction that's equally, uh, that equals to another fraction. But basically, the main thing here is to recognize that, hey, we're dealing with the ratio, and let's write this uh, information in this problem as a ratio. And now we can go ahead and talk about how we can uh, not, excuse me, write, uh, we're dealing with ratios. Let's go and write this as a proportion. Now let's go ahead and solve this proportion. Okay, so what is a proportion? So a proportion 
is effectively two equal fractions. And let me, I'm going to talk about this here in a second. Let me just kind of go down here and show you. If we have two equal fractions, all right, let's say the fraction one half, one half is the same as uh, the fraction four over eight or five over t uh, 10 or um, the 30 over 60. There's an infinite amount of fractions one half is equal to. These two fractions right here are equivalent. So when you, anytime you have two equal fractions, uh, you're dealing with a proportion. And when you have a proportion, what holds true is something called the cross product. So in other words, when we cross multiply cross product, the cross products are equal in a proportion. So let's take a look at this. One times eight is what? Well, that's going to be one times eight. That's going to be equal to two times four. So two times four is what? Eight. One times eight is eight. So when you have a proportion, the cross products are equal. Okay. All right. So as long as you understand that we're dealing with proportion and we're dealing with uh, using the cross product, then we can solve any proportion. Let me go and erase this stuff here. But let's go back to our original setup here. We have 8 over 10 is equal to uh, 12 over X. So some of you might say, well, I can reduce this fraction. Uh, so let's go ahead and write that as 4 over 5. And that's perfectly fine. Okay, But let's just suppose that you knew how to write the proportion. We just couldn't figure out how to solve it. Let's just look at this, okay? If we're dealing with this fraction has to be the same as this fraction, I said, all right, so here I have a four, but now this four, I'm kind of, is the numerator, but here is a 12. How can I take a four and make it into a 12? Well, maybe I can just multiply it by three, right? Just kind of just thinking logically here. Well, it uh, looks like this four is multiplied by three to end up with a 12. So if I multiply the numerator by three, well, maybe if I multiply the denominator by 3 as well, I'll get that number, which, of course, would be 15. And that is our answer. Okay, so if you kind of reason through it, that's perfectly fine. But what we're going to do here is use the cross product to solve this proportion right here. We're actually going to do it for both of these proportions. So uh, it's not a bad idea to reduce these fractions just to make your life easier. Let's go ahead and see how this works right now. Okay, so... Here's our two proportions. So we, uh, we have 8 over 10. 8 is to 10 as 12 is to what number? So 8 tenths is the same thing as 4 fifths. So we can use the cross products on both of these proportions because they are equivalent. Let's go ahead and use this one here. 8 times x is 8x. And that's going to be equal to 10 times 12, which is 120. All right, so again, this is the cross product. So we have a basic algebra equation. 8x is equal to 120. How do we solve for x? We simply divide both sides of the equation by 8. So 120 divided by 8 is 15. All right, that is our answer. Let's go ahead and uh, see the cross product in action here. So 4 times x is 4x, and that's going to be equal to 5 times 12, which is 60. All right, so we got to solve for x. So we have to divide both sides of the equation by 4. 60 divided by 4 is 15. We end up with the same answer. So uh, this is it, okay? We just solved a ratio problem by setting up a proportion. And again, this is a part of a, uh, and using the cross product. When you study proportions, uh, you um, can uh, learn some other terms as well, uh, things like the means and the extremes and some other things. There's different properties of proportions. So I'm kind of uh, giving you kind of the basic foundational stuff. But if you remember the cross product, you'll always be able to solve proportion problems. But more importantly, proportion problems are related to rate and ratio problems. You definitely, as a math student, okay, if you're learning any kind of, you know, algebra or beyond, you have to understand rates, ratios, and proportions, okay? So I think a lot of uh, people out there might say, oh, yeah, I know how to do this, uh, and I know what a rate is, I know what a ratio is, but they kind of know, right? That's not good enough. You really want to truly master the definitions of these things and be able to, um, you know, apply your math knowledge to solve any of these problems as you encounter them. All right, so if you need help, again, with proportions, uh, and this comes up um, not only in algebra but in geometry as well, check out my various courses. If you're at the algebra one level, I teach proportions, rates, ratio, and proportions there, and I also teach it in my pre-algebra level. Uh, of course, this comes up again in geometry, so you got to know this stuff. All right, so hopefully this little video helps you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.